Thank you for joining us on Trenton Talks, WIMG 1300 AM. Um, your host, Gerald Trueheart, board member of Trenton Board of Ed, chair of community, parent community engagement, uh, school support committee. I'm my beautiful co-host, uh, parent coordinator, homeless liaison for Trenton Public Schools. Denise Kreese is with me and we have an exciting program for you this evening. Uh, we have two of our Trenton Central High School small learning communities, one being the School of Communications, uh, and one also being STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we have uh, Gwen Hansen, uh, one of our vice principals, uh, with us uh, this afternoon uh, from the School of Communications, Alvin Francis, one of our teacher leaders at Trenton Public Schools, uh, part of the School of Communications. I'm gonna allow them to introduce all the folks who are with them on the call to, to this afternoon. Uh, in terms of science, technology, engineering, and math, we have Beecher Brown, our vice principal. Uh, and I believe, uh, I'm not sure who else is on the call for, uh, for STEM, uh, but we'll have Beecher introduce uh, her, her, uh, her guests uh, that are on the call uh, this afternoon. We have also students on the call. We're gonna be describing, discussing uh, both of these school learning communities so that you can hear more about uh, what's happening in those small learning communities and all the great opportunities that there are for our students to express themselves academically and socially and in both the School of Communication as well as Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. We're gonna start out with the intro. Uh, Denise, we're gonna intro, let's intro School of Communications and then following that intro is intro science, technology, engineering, and math. And then we can be begin our conversation around both of those small learning communities. So let's start out with School of Communications. Uh, Ms. Gwen Hansen. Oh, so I'm, go ahead, Gwen. Go ahead. Okay. I'm Gwen Hansen. I'm the vice principal for the School of Communications. And with me today is Alvin Francis, who is our teacher leader for the School of Communications. And he will introduce all the folks that we have brought with us to brag about our community. All right, guys. Um, I uh, want to thank you guys for, jump, uh, for joining us today. Um, we have uh, Robert uh, Bullington, who is with uh, Front Row Seat Productions, um, located uh, right here in Mercer County. I um, also have uh, Matt Miro, uh, who is uh, Assistant uh, Director over at uh, WBCB, um, uh, 1490 um, AM, and now they actually have a new FM um, designation, 107.3 um, FM. Um, Matt, um, Mario Coniglio, who is our uh, TV production, um, uh, our radio production teacher um, at uh, the School of Communication. And then um, Scott Sorrentino um, is our TV production teacher. And then our student, um, Jessica uh, Nazario, uh, who is a uh, sophomore and uh, one of our shining stars. So, um, you know, thank all you guys for uh, joining us. All right, why don't you talk a little bit about the communications community? Um, what's the like enrollment process like? Do students have to apply for it or is it just student choice? Can you talk to us a little bit about that and some of the projects that you're hosting with the students? Um, do you wanna take that in a sense or you want me to go? Sure. Before you, before you, guys, uh, before you guys get started on that, once you answer that question, uh, Gwen, Let's, let's shoot over to uh, STEM and have them introduce themselves as well. But first, answer the question uh, that Denise has asked you, and then we'll, we'll jump over right to STEM so they can introduce themselves as well. Thank you. Certainly. So at the high school, we actually host the Ninth Grade Academy. This year, they came over. It was a week. They came to visit. They spend the whole group, the group of students spends the day with us. They visit each small learning community. They get to see um, what happens in the community. They get to see the, the very specific career and technical education classes that are offered by each community. And then the students actually get to select which community they would like to join. Um, we do really well, kids get about 95% of the students get their first choice of community. So that's actually how the students get into every community. I guess All we'll right. just go over to STEM Future. first and yeah. then we'll talk about projects. All right, I am Deirdre Brown. Um, I am the vice principal of the STEM Academy and I will introduce our teacher leader, Glennis Caceres, um, to introduce everyone else who's here with us from STEM. 
Uh, so my name is Glennis Caspers, as Ms. Brown said, and I am the teacher leader for the STEM community. And today we have two of our program, two representatives from our program, two of our programs that we house over at the STEM Academy. We have Jerry He. He is the executive director of CARTS, uh, and he has paired up with some wonderful people in Princeton, and they are working on the Trenton Moves Project, which is uh, hopefully the uh, idea behind having autonomous vehicles um, or Trenton should be the first uh, city where they're going to roll this out. Uh, and I'm sure he'll tell us a little bit more about his program in a little bit. And he's working with some of our automotive students and doing lots of cool projects and workshops um, with some other Princeton students. And then we have Carlos Estrada. He is a structural engineer for HDR. And he works with the ACE Mentorship Program. And they come to us and they provide mentorship. They provide uh, project-based learning, um, exposure to uh, careers in uh, automotive construction, architecture rather, construction and engineer to a group of students. And uh, we are glad to have him as well. We have two students with us. We have Sajeda Simmons, who is a engineering student in STEM. And we have Hedersong Valles, who is also a STEM community member. And he uh, is part of our Black SEAL program. So we have another program for which we don't have a partner Present, but we have our student who can tell us a little bit, a little bit about that program. Um, and it's a group of students, and the goal is to leave us with their Black Seal license. And that's who we have present today. Unfortunately, we don't have any uh, of our teachers, um, but yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so we're just going to jump back to Alvin. Did you want to talk a little bit about projects, and then, you know, just share anything that you want in regards to the program? Sure. Um, so uh, currently, um, and, and I'll probably have the, the two teachers that are uh, directly involved with these programs um, to dive a little bit more in depth with uh, what it is that they're doing. But currently, uh, we have, um, um, thanks to a partnership that we have with um, WBCB, uh, we have a, um, a monthly show that we're doing with um, the um, the mayor of the city of Trenton. We do that every fourth um, Thursday of the month. Um, so um, I'll, I'll let um, Maria talk a little bit more about that. And then uh, with Mr. Sorrentino, um, his kids are working on um, a bunch of uh, different uh, programs, um, one of which um, is uh, working together with uh, one of our parent liaison um, in uh, coming up with a series of um, talk shows, uh, one of which will include uh, the superintendent of the uh, of, of Trenton Public School. So um, let's uh, go ahead with uh, Mario, talk a little bit more about what it is that you guys are doing in your classroom, and then we'll jump back to Scott. All right. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Mario Canigle. I'm the digital audio teacher at TCHS. And uh, just to kind of expand a little bit about, you know, what uh, what Alvin had touched upon, we have a, we offer students career ready practices, and he mentioned one of which that we we offer, and that's the uh, co the collaboration with WBCB AM 1490 Radio, and that's the Trenton Talks podcast that he said is every fourth Thursday of the month with Mayor Gashora. So it provides students with the ability to be job shadow a sound engineer, as well as be a part of the, the physical podcast and run the soundboard. So they have that experience that they're privy to. The other career ready practice that's offered is our J and J podcast that we try to do at least one a month. And so far this year, you know, with everything going on, we were able to actually get three completed and two of which uh, involved a nurse. So they got career exploration in nursing, as well as we were able to interview an epidemiologist. So the students were completely and utterly in charge of handling the interview, coming up with the questions that were sent out, you know, prior to, so that the guest was you know, in the know of what would be expected of them question, uh, question wise. We have a media club that students are excited about. It's, you know, it started out kind of slow, but now it's starting to progress where we're averaging six to seven students. And that meets every Tuesday after school with one of our stakeholders, uh, Mr. Goodman, who has, has you know, uh, graciously donated his time and, and comes and, and tries to get and collect those students so that they can come and gain that experience. As far as stuff that we do within the classroom, you know, we began pretty early on with downloading a, a voice recording application that's free 
And it's pretty much now building upon those skills and teaching them how to use the software. We use Adobe as our platform in the classroom. They use Audition. So they're getting experience being becoming editors and taking the material that's raw and then, actu and then actually enhancing it and making it sound as if it's something like this. We're doing you know, a, pod a podcast or putting it to YouTube where the sound quality is impeccable. Moving, moving forward, like so far, things that they've done in projects, they, they've done, uh, my beginner students have done many podcasts. They've performed and created radio jingles. They've done commercial spots for, for radio and some of the platforms that they've been using as far as for podcasting. Uh, they've used Anchor, which is like for the introduction students, introductory students, and my audio broadcasting, which are my upper level class. They're familiarized now with Podbean, which is another platform that's used in the podcasting world. Uh, they also get the experience of learning the equipment and then actually being active participants. And something that's upcoming is uh, this Friday, actually, we have one of our, it's the, for, for wellness, uh, it's wellness month. So we have our wellness specialist, uh, Ms. Melda Grant, that's going to be coming in. And so the students are going to be in charge of putting that performance together. Uh, they'll, they, she'll be in charge of the show, but the students will be actively engaged and participating in running the board and conducting the, uh, the podcast. So we're looking forward to that, but that's pretty much where we are. And hopefully I didn't take up too much of your time. Absolutely. Now that sounds so exciting. Um, they're getting a taste for what, you know, a digital media career could look like in the future. So that's really awesome. And, and the possibilities are endless and you're just opening up those outlets. So I would love to hear from the students so that they can share their experience. And if this is something that they can possibly see in their future. That's great. So we'll get to um, Jessica in just a little bit, but um, uh, Mr. Sorrentino, you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. Hi, uh, Trenton community. Hi, WBCB listeners. It's great to talk to you tonight. Um, I'm Mr. Sorrentino. I teach at the high school vi uh, video production. And you all know we have a, a brand new uh, building. And with that building, we got this really cool TV studio that's all new and up to date. And uh, this has been a building year because we were not in the building last year. So uh, the students we have this year, we are really exploring the, the studio and its capabilities. We're doing a weekly news. Uh, it's like a news and variety show, Tornado TV News. And uh, the students write the stories um, around uh, Tuesday. They were due today. Uh, we'll write up the script and practice a little bit on Wednesday with our on-air talent. And then um, Thursday, we tape. Uh, and then it goes out on Friday. That's our production schedule currently. And that for a high school, that's that's pretty busy. If we can manage to do this more than once a week, we're, we want to do that, but we're working up to it. Um, the other uh, less frequent show is called, I think we're calling it, uh, what, we, what was the title we worked out? I think something like Get Real or Keeping It Real, something like that. Real Keeping talk. It Real. Keeping It Real Roundtable. And this is, uh, the idea with this was, uh, talk show but not just like some students sitting around talking students who are talking and asking questions of the people who have the power in the district to make things the way they are mm. and our first guest is the superintendent we're, we're real excited and that's this is going to be a challenge because it's a bit more open-ended it's not a scripted program where we just you know read off a teleprompter this is um you know like the follow-up questions depend on what um the big scary superintendent says you know he's he's powerful he, he's the big boss and uh so that, that that's been interesting uh it's a little bit more complex and but i think our, our students like jessica are up to the challenge jessica is actually uh one of our on-air talent she's on the news show and she's going to be also on the uh the panel show is jessica the young lady that i saw uh recently doing like a there was two students and they, they looked like they were, they were. Uh... That's correct. Yes. That yeah. is oh my God. That was so cool. I was watching yeah, them. Great. I was so excited. There was, and then another young lady interviewed one of the coaches on the field. Yes. Yes. That's and our I, show. That's Tornado that was TV. Like, whoa, that was so good. Thank I you. Really enjoyed that. So Jessica, you want to uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, your, your excitement about uh, doing the show and, you know, what it is that you hope to achieve from this? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, so hi, everybody. My name is Jess. Um, I'm a sophomore and I'm in communications. Um, something I really like about communications is that um, you don't have to know what you want to do in life. Communications kind of like you kind of figure it out on your own. Like communications is like 
Um, the skills you learn in there, you can use it in any kind of career path you choose. Um, Cause the whole point of communications is to, you know, learn how to really communicate with people. And you, that's a, a skill that you can use at any job you go with. Um, for example, Tornado TV News, I'm one of the hosts there along with John Meir. I don't know if he's on the call, but um, I really enjoy doing that. We're planning to do it. Uh, we're planning to meet tomorrow and then Thursday we're gonna shoot it. Um, and it's like some like programs just like that. We, we get out of our comfort zone and just kind of like learn new things. Um, I remember I was doing the uh, tour with Ninth Grade Academy and I was showing them the cameras for photography. And I asked a lot of them like, hey, do you know, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And a lot of them said, you know what, I don't even know. And I said, it's okay not to know. And then I recommended for them to, you know, try out communications because communications, you're not really stuck to one thing. Um, there's just a lot of things you can do, like you know, uh, digital media and a lot of other things you can kind of get into. And then eventually you get to find out what you're into and, you know, find your own, what you want to do when you grow up. So yeah, I really love communications. Awesome. So two of the other programs that we have that is not represented here um, um, this evening are our uh, photography program, which is our um, entry level uh, uh, into whether you you choose in digital media or TV production. And then of course you have um, uh, the digital media pathway. Um, the, the unique thing about the kids in, um, in photography and some of the kids um, from uh, digital media, they're actually responsible for the last um, 12, 15 years. They're the ones that actually produces the school yearbook from start to finish, from cover to cover. So that's one of the big projects that um, that, that group um, does. And so if you have ever um, seen um, a recent copy of um, the school yearbook, you realize that um, these kids are actually putting in um, good quality work. And it, they pretty much will start um, around um, in August, end, uh, end of July into August. Remember, school starts in September. They start about the end of July. Um, you know, designing the cover, coming up with the concepts and, and so forth. And they take it all the way through distribution, which will happen in June. So it's almost a full year um, project for, um, for these kids. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Any other upcoming events that you want to talk about? Or is there another student on? I'm sorry. No, there's not. Um, Alvin can answer about the event. But I think something else that our kids get a unique opportunity to do is a lot of times if you see a video coming out of the, of the high school of like a VPA production, either a musical or the dance show or whatever, our kids have filmed that and edited that piece and prepared it. So not only are they practicing things that they like learn in their classroom, within their classroom and within shows that they create, they're actually contributing to sort of spreading the good news about our school wow. across the community. It's amazing. And they're just building their portfolio for college, that's awesome. Yeah, one of the things that's important too is uh, with WBCB uh, and 1490 and 107.3, uh, the question for you guys is, what opportunities are available to students uh, while they're in school, once they graduate? I know they're working uh, now in the school in various projects, but is there opportunities for job shot, job opportunities to get paid, do some work with uh, your, your station, uh, maybe over the summer or in the future when they graduate, there's opportunities for them to do some work? No, it's a good, it's a good question, Gerald. And uh, first off, Jessica, well said about the entire industry, you know, a few minutes ago, you know, it's something we harp on when uh, we have young broadcasters in with us. Um, and, and coming to trends always been something enjoyable for myself and others here at BCB. Uh, so to, to answer your question, uh, Gerald, absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll put my email in the, uh, in the chat. So anyone here who knows someone or students on who, who think would be interested, uh, whether it's freelance opportunities, internships, part-time, you know, full-time. This industry is so free-flowing and, you know, we, we could have three openings in one month and then, you know, five the next month. It's just everyone is always changing positions or roles or stations. So uh, absolutely. And I'll be sure to put my uh, contact info uh, in there for anyone interested. So Alvin, what else you got for us, Alvin and, and Ms. Hansen? What else you got for us? I mean, you got some great programs happening. The kids are very excited. I see Jessica's very excited. Well, you know, one of the things with 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 communications that I've always said um, 
you know, where um, all the other communities are, are doing, um, doing stuff that, you know, everyone um, can see. We're the ones in the background that's documenting everything so that everyone could have, um, could, 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 you know, have it to view uh, forever and ever and ever. So where a lot of times we don't get props or we don't get credit for, for certain things, but we're definitely in the background doing a lot. And so, um, like she, um, Miss Brown, Miss Brown mentioned, or she'll talk a little bit more about um, the activities next week. Uh, more than likely, all of those uh, images that will be captured for, um, you know, social media or for Channel 19 or for the yearbook or, 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 or so forth, uh, will be captured by students from the um, School of Communications. So we're, we don't, you know, I can't say uh, for sure, uh, you know, that we have one specific thing um, happening. Uh, we do try to um, to to get you know, mixed in with 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 as much of the the sprinklings of everything that's happening uh, within the high school. Um, the one thing that we have um, on our um, on, on our table that we still need some some final planning uh, would be our um, our digital media or digital fest um, is what it's called. So we usually have this. Um, it's been um, a while, probably about three years since we've had it um, because of COVID. Um, but it's uh, uh, the time of the year, at the end of the year, where all the schools, I mean, the students are able to uh, come together and display their work. And we invite the parents and the community to come in and observe uh, what it is that they've been working on all year. So um, we still need to, uh, we'll probably meet um, later this week again, to see if we could work out the final details of that and see if whether or not um, that's a viable option or not. That sounds great, um, displaying and showcasing the work. And uh, like you said, Alvin, uh, communications and digital media and behind the scenes work is not something that's easy to do. Um, it's very time consuming and you have to be very meticulous and very regimented when you're doing video editing, editing and like I can only imagine um, the work that the students are doing. So um, bravo and kudos to you and the students uh, for a great job. Did we want to um, move into STEM? We're at our half hour already. Well, unless we have some final some, some final words from uh, communications, uh, maybe a minute a minute of final words from. Um, Ms. Hansen, uh, close out this segment and then maybe some announcements. Go ahead, Gwen. Okay, so I cannot tell you how exciting it is to be a part of School of Communications. The kids are just really, really into what we're doing. It's, it's wonderful that they are where they've chosen to be and they really are passionate about their work. They're, they want to, to practice and to put into play all of the things that they learn in their classrooms. They're around the building all the time. Like they're out of the classroom taking pictures around the school and then they're back in their classroom and they're like digitally editing them. They're out with TV cameras, capturing snippets here, there and everywhere. Like if you ever came in to our building during a school day, you would see the kids everywhere. Like our learning is all over. They're just very, very passionate. And our teachers are very working diligently to make sure that the kids are are practicing what they're being taught and that they're actually learning real life skills as well. Oftentimes, particularly in Mr. Sorrentino's class, they work in a group. So learning that collaborative aspect of career, you know, that career, I can't even think about what I'm trying to say, but so that they can function in a workplace and work collaboratively, is just fantastic. I couldn't be prouder to be part of any community. And Jess has her hand up. I'm not sure what she would like to add, but I would certainly like to hear from her. Go ahead, Jessica. I just wanted to add one last thing is that, well, adding on to Ms. Hansen and what Mr. Francis was saying is that, you know, communications is really, um, I'd say more than any other community, we're really involved in the school. We're always behind the scenes. We're always, you know, trying to, uh, you know, do things like, you know, photography, you know, the yearbook, all that kind of stuff. And also another thing, communications, we learn very hands-on and I know not every student learns the same, but communications is very good at like learning that, um, adapting to different students' learning styles. Like, cause you know, teachers, you know, know that not every student learns the same and I'm more hands-on. So that's what I really like about communications as well. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, that's awesome, Jessica. You know how to, you good communicator. I tell you, you know how to jump right in and, and get right to your point and you finish with flying colors. And 
I want to thank uh, you, Gwen Hansen, and Vice Principal, and uh, Alvin Francis, Teacher Leader, and Mario, and Scott, and uh, Matt. Hey, man, you know, I appreciate you guys. Good seeing you again, Brother Coniglio and Brother Sarantino. I was, I was at the high school recently. I uh, take a look at their work, man. They're, they're, at, least, at least their equipment, what they're using, man. It's a state-of-the-art facility over there at the high school, and they're going, doing great work with our students, Gwen. Appreciate you and the work that you're doing, your leadership over at uh, the School of Communications. Great, great work and great partnerships and great students on the call uh, this afternoon. Thank you so much for your time, and we appreciate you. So just remember, we have a spot for you whenever time you guys are ready to, you know, to move to the next level. Oh, you start. Okay, you're right. Uh, we talked about IMG, uh, our radio broadcast for IMG, uh, coming in and working with uh, within the studio. So yes, uh, probably starting next year. We'll close out this year and we'll do it right. We'll be planned properly and implement properly. We'll be ready to get started sometime in September. But prior to that, uh, before the year ends, we'll be in touch to move it forward so we can get this thing started properly, decent and in order. Thanks for that, that uh, shout out, Alvin. Appreciate you, Brother Francis. So I got, got, I got one announcement, uh, Denise, one announcement before we go into uh, Vice VP Dietra Brown, uh, leadership of uh, STEM. Uh, we have one, I have one, just one quick announcement. Uh, Trenton Police Department's 2022 uh, summer camp yep. is open for applications. Uh, you must be 10 to 15 years old. Applications are available at Trenton Police Department headquarters. The applications must be returned uh, by Friday, June 4th. Requirements are you must be a city of Trenton resident between ages 10 and 15. You must have a letter of recommendation from a teacher or a principal. And please are asked the application to return by June 24th. And that is coming from Detective Tamika in Ville. She's Community Affairs, Trenton Police Department. And again, it's your police, uh, Trenton Police Department 2022 summer camp. More information to come. We just got that announcement, I believe, today, right, Denise, or the other yes. day. And she will be Monday. joining us next week um, right. to share a little bit more about details of the program. So we're excited. That's right. That's great. That's right. You know, one other announcement, uh, the Rotary Club, um, as well as uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Mercer County are having a food distribution Saturday, May 7th, 10 to 12, uh, while supplies last, Rain or Shine, Boys and Girls Club, 1040 Spruce Street. And that's in Lawrence uh, Township, New Jersey, 1040 Spruce Street. Uh, End Hunger 3.6, serving the change in lives. Rotary International District 7475 uh, Service Project uh, in cooperation and partnership with the Boys and Girls Club of Mercer County this Saturday, May 7th from 10 to 12. Again, 1040 Spruce Street, that's in Lawrence Township, New Jersey. Further information, Bill Coleman, event chair, uh, 609-577-2530. Six. Yes. I want to get those few announcements out. Any other announcements you may have you want to announce to these before we move on to uh, Dietrich Brown and STEM? Yes, we are uh, preparing for our final Parent Connect Summit Saturday, May 14th from 8.30 to right. 1 p.m. at the high school. So Alvin, it would be cool if the students came and like live stream our keynote speaker. I'm just like putting it out there. <laughs> it's okay if you guys aren't available, but the invitation is there Saturday, May 14th um, from 8.30 to 1. The keynote um, will start speaking around 9.30. That'd be super awesome if we live stream so that parents could um, get motivated to be engaged between home and school and learn a little bit more about how to become parent leaders in our um, school community. So super awesome. I just had to throw it out there. Um, <laughs> no promises, but I'll try and see what we could do. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And um, I'm excited to share that um, our, one of our parents will be leading a parent support group. Um, well, actually two of our parents at Robbins Elementary School um, Wednesday, May 18th from five to seven. And um, I will share that information once I receive the finalized flyer. And this will be parent led um, with our parent liaison and community partner from Arm in Arm. So we're really excited um, to share that information. So I think awesome. we can turn over now, right? Yeah, okay. yes, so, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Uh, awesome. All right, let's talk about STEM. What's going on with the STEM community? 
All right. But before I talk about STEM, I just want to say how much we appreciate the communication uh, school of communications because um, they do our uh, announcements in the morning. The students, um, every time we have an event, we call Mr. Francis and Mr. Sorrentino and they they show up and they show up big and we appreciate it. Um, so I just wanted to, to put that out there that um, when you walk into our building, we have a new building. So now we have screens all over with announcements everywhere on the it's, it's it's wonderful and we would not have that if it were not for the school of communication so thank you all right now stem um for stem the stem academy our motto is we're committed to excellence um i'm excited um this is uh my second year um as a, a vp i was interim vp last year this is my first year as a, a vice principal and i get to work with miss glennis caceres as our teacher leader and we are just having a great time um, this year. Uh, we have three pathways, an engineering pathway, a construction pathway, and an automotive pathway. Uh, we are working toward getting uh, accreditation for our automotive program, um, as well as getting certifications for our students. And I'll let Ms. Glennis Caceres uh, continue on with our program, especially Black Seal. We want to thank um, the Trenton Public Education Foundation for providing um, the funds for our Black Seal program as well. So our students leave and they can leave school with um, certification and, and jobs. So um, just wanna put that out there and Ms. Caceres, you can take it away. Um, so I am also going to say that I'm very excited to be part of STEM. I have recently assumed this role as of December of last year. So I'm fairly new in this game. And my background is neither engineering nor any of these. So as students are learning about these programs, so am I. And the one thing I will say about STEM is that I went to a traditional high school where it was a magnet school. We didn't have all these pathways, all these offerings. And so when I step foot in some of these classrooms, aside from the fact that these students do have access to a state of the art facility, I mean, the construction room is a construction classroom. You will learn every about every machinery, every drill, every saw that exists, they are building. In the automotive wing, I mean, it looks better than where I take my car to get serviced. So aside from the facilities, just being beautiful facilities, um, these students are always doing something. There is no teacher that's standing up lecturing. I mean, Ms. Massinet, every time I go in there, students are engaged. Engagement really is a part of the STEM community as is with the uh, communications. Um, just all around, there's always excitement even the students who may be in a community because they were just placed there and that isn't their first choice they are still engaged so i will say i am very happy to be a member of the stem community and um you know just proud to be a part of everything that's going on now aside from automotive construction and engineering we also have an architecture program that we offer we have princeton who comes in-house and they actually provide a fellow that teaches an architecture class and these students at the it's project based and at the end of the course they do a presentation for Princeton professors they have real architectural firms and I witnessed it for the first time this year and it was really really amazing um, and in addition to that we do offer the black seal licensing program the training the training center comes into us and they provide the necessary um, learning and hands-on experience for students to leave us with a Black Seal license. Um, I think it's one of the few high school programs in the state that exists where students can graduate with a Black Seal license. And for anyone who doesn't know what a Black Seal license is, it is the license that uh, is necessary to maintain any type of boiler system in any facility, whether it be a school, hospital, mall. Um, so it is very useful, it is in high demand, and we are very, very grateful to offer that program. Um, in just a couple seconds, I'm going to let Harrison Valles give us a little bit of insight, maybe why he selected to join that program, what value does he see, does he deem it as valuable, how is he enjoying it, just so we can hear a little bit from the student perspective. Now, just, uh, after Harrison, I will allow Sajeda to speak, and Sajeda, she's an engineering student, so she can tell us a little bit about the projects and the, uh, the different things they learn in some of her engineering classes. Um, so Harrison, you want to unmute yourself, buddy, and tell us a little bit about 
what you think about the Black Seal program. Uh oh, is Pedersong, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, good Hi. afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm part of the Black Seal program, training program in the program we are being trained about how to operate hot steam and boiler plants. I'm very happy to be in this program because it provides us about what it needs to operate a, a boiler. And it'll also giving us for free, the school's providing everything for free. We are able to take our certification test at the end of the program. It's gonna be, it's gonna provide us with a license after high school we could work as a operator. And also every month at the training center, teachers, they come up to the, to the Trenton Central High School. They teach us everything about the, the boilers. And also every Thursday, we go to their site and we work with the Black Seal workers. And they, we can see everything. From, we could see the, the, the boilers from our point of perspective and we could work with them. And we can learn from every, everything. I'd like to ask a question from uh, Garrison. Uh, this is with Fredo Ortiz. Um, this this program, I didn't even know that that it existed. To be honest with you, because it seems like it's relatively new. Uh, do, does it get involved with? Uh, is is there any work that you do with your own uh, uh, engineer in the building? Because you're in a state of the art building that has a lot of technology and. And if the system goes down and the boilers, are, is there any connection with our own building uh, with this program? I mean, where do they go? Is there like a classroom setting there with boilers? I, I'm just kind of uh, uh, interested in knowing more. All right. So basically, every Monday we don't have any, we don't see no boilers because we're we're we are in the classroom in school. In the classroom. But every Thursday we are we go to to the site which is called in Vivotech. It's in Hamilton. And they have their room is full of boilers. Oh, okay. Operating boilers, yeah. Okay, excellent. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. No problem. I'm glad. Well, I mean, sir, you I'm asked the, that. I'm glad. You, oh, go ahead. So who? Is that Gar Garson? Go ahead. Garson, go ahead. Yes, sir. Basically, I'm happy about the program because this program is a very expensive. If you take it outside of the school, but the school is providing us for for free. So, I mean, we should take advantage of it. That's what I'm trying to do. Excellent. There's opportunities, uh, Garrison. There's opportunities uh, when you get your black seal. It's required for head custodians and engineers in our school district uh, to have a black seal license. You have to have a black seal license, not just uh, in Trenton Public Schools, but in Lawrence, where I work in Lawrence Township and other uh, public schools. And they pay well off the top starting out. Uh, maybe I start as a head custodian, but having your black seal will lead you to that direction. It's a great career path, not just in public schools, but in other sectors in, in our economy as well. So great work. I'm glad you're involved with that and you're doing great work there. So thank you so much. Oh, I see your picture now. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Hey, Good. thank you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, great, great. Are you looking for future opportunities with your Black Seal? Or are you getting it because you want to have your license and you want to be able to do great work? Or are you looking to work in uh, industry? Uh, what industry are you looking to go into? So basically after high school, I was thinking about working in joining the criminology school. But if the school's provided this program for free, I was thinking why, why not take advantage of it and learn something something new in life. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I might not in be a, a, a police officer and I might use this this Black Seal license to, to work. What year in school are you? Excuse me? Uh, uh, what what year? What, uh, what's what's? Well, I'm a junior. Junior. A this junior. Moment. Yes, sir. Junior. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it's a good career. Let me tell you, because uh, if you need a part-time job after you graduate, we'll be we're hiring uh, 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 custodial workers all the time in the schools, and it's a good way to get some more experience. Yeah. So continue doing what you're doing and that's smart. Take advantage of all the things that are available to you. Doesn't mean that you have to go into that area, but certainly it prepares you uh, to feed a family somewhere along the line. So that's yes. very smart. Mm -hmm. Hey, Deetra, you got some partners with us tonight, right? What's up with, our, what's up with your partners? Thanks, thanks, you, uh, thanks, Garrison. Thanks, Glennis. You got some, Glennis has more, more to add, but 
I, I see you have some partners on our, on the call. We do, we do. We have two partners. We have Jerry He. Uh, hey, Jerry. And Jerry, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about um, carts and Trenton Moves and your connection to our students. And then after that, we'll have Mr. Carlos Estrada come in uh, and tell us a little bit about how he connects with our students and what, what uh, programs we have in place. Sure, thank you very much. Great to see everyone here. Um, great to e-meet with many of you. So uh, my name is Jerry. I'm the executive director of CARDS. We are a Princeton-based nonprofit um, solely dedicated to the provision of safe and high quality mobility for all. And uh, we work very closely with uh, Princeton University, but also uh, the city of Trenton, and New Jersey Department of Transportation and governor's office on the uh, Trenton Moves Initiative and we are currently providing both the technical support and um, more importantly, the com uh, community engagement um, support for the Trenton Moves project. Uh, moves, if you haven't heard about it yet, um, um, it means mobility and opportunity vehicles equity system and equity is key here. Um, where we're coming from is, um, uh, I was also a student at Princeton before and Becca was, when I was a student, uh, I worked uh, with a Professor Kornhauser, you know, incubating some kind of academic dream to really utilize um, the advancement in autonomous mobility uh, or smart driving cars to really provide mobility to the people who need it. Um, so since 2010, about $330 billion have been invested globally in this technology, you know, like shared electric autonomous mobility. And we think close to zero have been mm, spent on the sociology part of this technology. Close to zero dollar have been kind of invested in, the, in understanding the demand of mobility. And the demand of mobility is where we're coming from. Uh, we think on, on one hand, the industry has been investing in creating you know, this additional form of affordable and safe mobility, right? And we wanted to apply to places where we think they're actually are a huge um, community support for, you know, the demand of uh, demand of mobility. So, and 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 as uh, as uh, Ms. Kasser said, uh, we uh, we are actually work started to engage with many of your students um, in Trenton Central High School to kind of discuss, you know, what smart driving cars are, what autonomous vehicles are, what Trenton Moves is because um, we started engaging with the community and the school uh, long before we actually started engaging with the industry because we wanted to make sure that, hey, community actually wants it. This is what the community wants. And that we wanted the community, we wanted the students to actually take ownership of the project because by the time that they graduate, by the time that they go to college, um, this is when Trenton Moves start to finally get deployed um, and then they will be part of the project. Um, and Trenton is actually leading this deployment in the world. Nowhere else in the world has um, this kind of, this scale of project being planned by any party. So we're trying to introduce uh, 100 autonomous vehicles to Trenton, New Jersey, starting with Trenton, New Jersey, and then have it expanded out to Mercer County. And uh, you can quote me, feel free to quote me. You can Google nowhere else in the world has seen this kind of scale and ambition of the project. And for the right reason, because we want to provide mobility for the people. And this is what's happening in the background for Trenton Moves. Uh, I could spend the next two hours talking about it, but I'm gonna skip and talk more about, you know, what's the, uh, was it equally important, but probably the more fun part of the project um, uh, for us. So CARS is uh, leading many of the community engagement in initiatives uh, for Trenton Moves. So we've knocked on the doors, you know, at the Donnelly Homes, at different Trenton Housing uh, Authority apartments. We talked to the seniors, we went to the senior centers. And then um, starting from this early spring, you know, following the announcement of a, of a Trenton getting $5 million, you know, dollar local transportation aid from the NJDOT, uh, we started to engage with the STEM Academy and 
at Trenton Central High School um, on the uh, biweekly almost, or maybe like a, at least twice a month basis, because there are a lot of really enthusiastic students at Princeton University who we work closely with, um, who really wants to share what they've been learning, what, the, what they've been researching on, uh, and share some kind of hands-on experience with the students in Trenton. And then, um, Equally important, there are a lot of enthusiastic students at the Trenton Central High uh, STEM Academy who really wants to learn, you know, these kind of technology. So we hosted a few workshops. We gave like an introductory lecture to more than you know fifty students in Trenton and uh, Central High, and um, we hosted workshops, hands-on workshops. Uh, where we invited Princeton autonomous vehicle engineering students, uh, Princeton electric speed boating students, and we will be inviting Princeton you know, racing electric students as well to teach um, students on the basics of like motors, electric motors, sensors, GPS sensors, radio frequency centers. Um, and then we actually have them kind of start soldering like a proto board, making their own chip. Um, we, uh, we, we taught them the basics of like the machining, like how a boat is made, you know, all these kind of activities uh, with your uh, enthusiastic STEM Academy students. So we are well, you know, welcome with uh, all your enthusiasm. And then we look forward to continue working with your students to really build the future together. And I saw in the comments, this is the new Trenton makes the world takes. Trenton moves, the world improves. All right. I like that. I like that. Say it one more time. Go ahead, Jerry, say it one more time, Jerry. Trenton moves, the world improves. Hey, all right, I like that. <laughs> and to quote the mayor, actually, <laughs> right. um, the, the mayor ahead. said, uh, uh, autonomous drives, Trenton thrives. So we can keep we going go. on forever. All right, we, we can keep, keep going forever. Logo. Yeah, and we are really, yeah. really grateful for you know all of you here, and also the superintendent and uh, assistant superintendent Hope Grant, who we in started engaging with more than three years ago when we were still incubating the project. She saw the vision, and it, it was also her vision. It's also the superintendent's vision. They wanted to, to be uh, to be at the front and center of this initiative. Uh, and they want their students to learn and they want their students to lead. And we thank everyone for their leadership in this. Hey, do you, do you, hey, Dietrich, do you, do you have a student on board who, who can share about this program? Unfortunately, we do not oh, have oh, any oh, students. Okay. okay. But All right. All right. If, if we are featured again, we will be glad. Oh, you definitely. To definitely. With some automotive students. We got next, Dietra. Let's what's the, what's happening. What's next? Well, we're gonna on. let we're gonna let Mr. Carlos Estrada tell us right. a little bit about how he engages our students. And then, last but not least, we have Sajada Simmons on the line. She's an right. engineering student, and she That's can right. tell a little bit about that part of the STEM community. Carlos, sure. Hi, everyone. Glad uh, glad to be here. Um, I'm just here to talk about a little bit about the ACE program that we offer. With Trenton, we actually partner with Turner Construction. Uh, I'm part of HDR, which we offer architecture and um, engineering services around the world. Um, and just a little bit about ACE Mentoring Program. It's a program offered throughout all of the US and Canada. And it's an after school program designed to attract high school students into pursuing careers into architecture, construction, and engineering. Um, and it was found, founded almost uh, 30 years ago, so in 1994. And I've been involved with this program about five to six years. I started, uh, or I was part of a previous chapter over in East Windsor, uh, part of Mercer County. I went to East Windsor, I'm a Mercer County uh, native, so to say. Um, so we wanted to offer uh, this program and expand it. And we were um, in talks with uh, Turner for a while about partnering and then offering this program. And then we identified uh, Trenton and then we approach them and whatnot. So essentially we offer uh, mentors from various disciplines in architecture and engineering, um, including you know, mechanical engineering, structural engineering, uh, electrical, plumbing, all of, all of the above, every single type of engineering you could think of. Again, construction in, in terms of trades, um, in terms of uh, equipment operators and whatnot. And we essentially teach the students um, what goes into either pursuing a career into these programs and some of the basics that are involved in, in some of these careers. Like for example, uh, 
uh, last class, I did a presentation on structural engineering, and then I had the kids build uh, marshmallow and spaghetti bridges. Uh, as very uh, fundamental as it sounds, I think uh, some of the concepts apply to whatever sort of um, construction material you, you're utilizing, whether it's spaghetti and marshmallows or you, you're utilizing steel and concrete. Um, so really we just aim to try to offer a perspective from a mentorship and professional standpoint uh, for the students. And again, um, we hope that we can encourage some of the students uh, that we have in our classes into pursuing some of the, some careers in, in uh, architecture, construction and engineering. And overall, really like when we have a complete year with the students, um, we usually aim to uh, do a project. And at the end of the year, we, we present it either at the New Jersey level or at the, at the US level, the Washington DC presentations that take, uh, take place. So that, that's really our purpose uh, to try to advance these students and really get them uh, get the most out of them and for them to get the most out of themselves to sort of understand some different careers and opportunities that are out there. Um, this year we started a bit late and we're meeting every Wednesday with the students. Um, and again, we do like half or not even half, we do like a short lecture and then we really try to do activities for them to get hands on and understand some of the concepts in engineering and architecture. Yes, and I was just going to add, hopefully next year we'll get the ball rolling in September and we'll have a much stronger ACE team that'll compete. And who knows, we'll make it to Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's the goal. Nice. Awesome. So we've worked nearing our hour. Did everyone get a chance to speak? I didn't want to uh, leave anybody out. We have so many people uh, on today. So Jada. So yes, we have, we have right, Jada, yes, yeah. we have Jada Simmons. She yeah. is one of our engineering students, wonderful student. Uh, so Jada, you want to unmute and tell us a little bit about why you chose the engineering program, what kinds of things happen in the engineering program? How do you feel about the engineering program? All right. Um, my name is Sajada Simmons, and I'm a junior in the STEM engineering program. Uh, I really, I really like it. Um, personally, I'm, I transferred over uh, before then, so that's why I started a little late. But usually, people will start in their ninth grade year and then really start their uh, career building tenth year in our main campus. But uh, I, th I, I really like the programs that STEM really builds up for people because right now I'm in the one of the older programs of STEM, the Solve program, which future features like more of the S in STEM, like the science components. Solve is a really big com uh, company with multiple bases around the US and they focus on helping uh, for a better uh, sustainable environment with working on soap and supply chains. And basically the program is about us uh, meeting different people throughout the company like the last time we went there, we met someone who deals with accounting. And so he walked us through his day with accounting that is connected with Solvay. And so it's really interesting to meet the different people of that company. And then right now we are working on the OSHA 10 uh, general industry certificate and working our way to get that with, through uh, the career safe website. And so that, that's one of the other opportunities we have to better our career planning throughout our high school years. Thank you, Sajeda. And I will just add one thing. Most of our students, we try to graduate, well, we try when they leave us, uh, we try for them to all be OSHA 10 certified, independent of what career path they may take. And um, also through the engineering program, we have a uh, pretty strong, hopefully we'll get stronger articulation with Mercer. And so our students as early as 10th grade can start taking Mercer Community College courses in the advanced manufacturing engineering track. So hopefully they'll graduate from us with close to a full associates um, if they continue on that path. So STEM has a lot of uh, good things to offer. The program and the pathways are we do require a commitment. Um, so students who choose each of those pathways 
you know, they, they tend to stay with us for, in those programs for at least two to three years. So, you know, we try to prepare them for real world, whether it's working or post-secondary schooling. What is that OSHA 10? You said OSHA 10, right? OSHA 10 certification. It's a safety certification that many industries recognize, even industries such as culinary. Um, and it just, it requires you to take these courses online and take some assessments. And then in the end, you can obtain the certification. It's an entry level safety certification for multiple industries. And so we try to provide it for all our students as one of the more uh, entry level certifications that they leave us with independent of what pathways they may choose in life. Wow, that is just so amazing that, you know, these two communities are really, and I'm sure all the communities, but what we're listening to today, you're preparing your students for the real world, you know, not just college readiness, I mean, career readiness. And, and I just loved hearing these new programs. As Mr. Ortiz said, like, these are some things that we don't get to hear on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is, you know, a great way to showcase your work on, you know, not only Facebook Live, but this will be streamed onto our Trenton YouTube page, which I will share with all of you after this segment. And, um, it, you know, listeners will be able to listen from the radio and then on TV, right, uh, Mr. Trueheart? So I don't, I could keep going of how proud <laughs> and how amazed I am. I mean, I'm just, I'm in, um, I'm so proud of the work that the students are doing, that the staff are doing. See you, Deetra. Yeah, I mean, it just Deetra. dedication. <laughs> yeah. Deetra, you got, go ahead, Deetra, what's up? Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Um, I just wanted to say just one last thing that we could not do what we're doing at the high school without the support of our community partners, our wonderful instructors. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week to you all, our teachers, um, our leaders in the building, our awesome principal, Courtney, um, as well as our assistant superintendent, Hope Grant, and all the others, uh, Mr. Ortiz, who is here with us. Um, our parents, Mr. Trueheart is one of them. Hey. Um, the right, superintendent, right, right. Mr. Earl, um, Jane Howard in the business office and the board of education and anyone else I forgot, I apologize, but we appreciate all of you because we could not do anything that we do in STEM or any of our academies without all of the support that we have in Trenton. So we appreciate it and thank you. And follow us on our Instagram pages as well. TCHS STEM, we've been posting a lot of stuff that they're doing in the classrooms. Thank you. Thank you, you know, very you know, much. Thank you. Uh, before we close, uh, 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 Gerald, I, I want to yeah. I want to ask Ms. Cassetta something. She mentioned that she, this is not her background. What is your background, very quickly? Because it's exciting for them to know. It is her background. Still, well, it is yeah, right. It, it is I certainly am. STEM, but, <laughs> but I I am more of the S in STEM. I am definitely a field scientist. I actually went to medical school, so I have a very roundabout way of how I ended up where I am. I would not change any decision I made, um, but I am more of a biologist, a lab bench research scientist kind of gal. Um, but so I'm learning as much about engineering, construction and automotive as all my students are too. As I have to evaluate curriculum and do all that good stuff, it is definitely new for me, but it is a journey worth worth the journey totally thank you guys so much mr trueheart hey, we're ready i think we're ready to close out yeah. um, denise i i, I did want to um robert uh, didn't get a chance to uh say very much um robert uh bullington uh do you want to have a, a word or two uh, for us uh, before we close out oh sure thank you i'm just so honored to be um part of the group and um and given my company's work in, in field video production, I'm really looking forward to working with Mr. Francis on, um, on uh, giving, giving some of the young people at the high school the experience of, of field production work and, and how, how to um, you know, record concerts at a certain level, how to produce multi-camera in the field. And I'm excited about my ongoing conversations with him about that and um, making every contribution that I can. So thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you so much.
So we're ready to close out, Denise. You want to close us out? Any, any sure. final closing comments? <laughs> and we just close out. I know we're over, over a little bit, but it's uh, okay. Well worth the time. Well worth the time. All Appreciate good information. Everybody. All good information. So thank you, um, friends, family, communities district staff for participating, for being present, for being here with us tonight. More to come. We just want to continue to showcase the work of Trenton Public Schools with our, uh, not only the high school, but our middle and, and elementary schools. So we just uh, look forward to uh, continue, continuing this show. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see you next week at, on Tuesday, same time, same place from five to six live on Facebook. Thank you and have a good evening. Have a good evening.